Good afternoon. We are back down to the river. It is the middle of March. It should be warm, but it's not. It's only three degrees because there's a storm going on. Clearly, climate change hasn't worked. Speaking of climate change, one of my favourite people, Sadiq Khan, has written a book about climate change and how to change people's behaviours. So let's take a look at what the book's all about. And then just to warm us up on this cold day, Let's read through some of the Facebook comments on his page when he announced that he'd written a book about climate change, because some of them are absolutely brilliant. So, Sadiq Khan's book, A Seven Step Guide to Winning Support for Tough Action on Climate Change. The first book from the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. To win the climate war, you first need to win the climate argument. So, he's already established in the second line of the bomb about the book, that it's not actually about the climate or science. It's about behaviour management and getting people to be on your side about your argument. Always the lawyer, eh? For many years, Sadiq Khan wasn't fully aware of the dangers posed by air pollution, nor its connection with climate change. Then, at age 43, he was unexpectedly diagnosed with adult onset asthma, brought on by the polluted London air that he'd been breathing for decades. So what did he do when he realised that his own health was in danger because of the city that he'd been living in? Did he move out and move to somewhere nice and green and leafy? Because he was a lawyer, he had the money to do it. He could have moved anywhere. He could have moved abroad. He could have moved to the cleanest place in the world and just grown vegetables. I mean, if my health was on the line, that's exactly what I would have done. I'd have said, fuck this, this polluted city that I've been living in. I'm out of here. I've got the money to leave. I'm off. But he didn't do that. Scandalised, Sadiq underwent a political transformation when he was contacted by a shady group of international financiers that wanted to push the world in a certain direction. Oh no, it doesn't say that. Scandalised, Sadiq underwent a political transformation that would see him become one of the most prominent global politicians, fighting and winning elections by playing the race card. I mean, fighting and winning elections on green issues. Since becoming the Mayor of London in 2016, he has declared a climate emergency introduced the world's first ultra-low emission zone. I'm pretty sure someone did that before him, though. And turned London into the first ever national park city. There's no mention there about stabbings, violence, or the fact that both the police force and fire departments are on their asses, and his council is virtually broke. They must just... Maybe that's in the book and they haven't put it in the bump here. Now, Sadiq draws on his experiences to reveal the seven ways environmental action gets blown off course and how to get it back on track. Whether by building coalitions across the political spectrum, putting social justice at the heart of green politics, or showing that the climate crisis is a health crisis too, he offers a playbook for anyone, voter, activist or politician, who wants to win the argument on the environment. OK, so even says right here, this is not a book about the environment, it is quite simply a book about how to win the argument on the environment. So there's nothing in here that will teach you anything about climate change, but there's everything in here about how to teach you to shout down someone who is saying that your argument isn't correct about climate change. That's all it is. It will help create a world where we can all breathe again, it says. But we can breathe perfectly well, and most of the science that I've seen coming out of London says that the air is pretty damn healthy in most of the areas, apart from the underground. So who's reviewed the book for him? Cities are where we will lose or win the climate change battle. The book offers a compelling torch of light on the path forward, says Cristiana Figueres, former executive secretary of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. No vested interest from her. There's another one here from an actual tin pot dictator. Since his election, Mayor Sadiq Khan has shown the world that transformative green politics is possible. And we would expect nothing less from you, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Funny, thoughtful and empowering. A powerful and practical repost to anyone losing hope in the ability of politicians to tackle the climate crisis. The climate crisis. Crime. It is a crime. Anyway, that was said by Ed Balls, who is someone who is just desperate to get his political career back on track. Hilarious, uplifting, and yet often unexpectedly moving. Powerful tools for anyone who wants to win the argument on climate, says Edward Enninful, editor-in-chief at Vogue magazine. A. Why is the editor of Vogue magazine writing something on Sadiq Khan's book? And B. I would bet a million pounds that he hasn't read it. Speaking of people who definitely haven't read the book, an absolute must read for anyone interested in politics for progressive change, says Jemima Hartshorn, co-founder of Mums for Lungs. 
I bet neither of those two have read the book. So, the comments on the Facebook post, Sadiq Khan very proudly posted that he'd written this book. I bet he didn't write it either. He hasn't got the time to write a book. It's been ghostwritten, hasn't it? He's just put his name to it, which was a terrible idea from a PR point of view. But anyway, let's look at the Facebook comments from when he actually posted saying, look, I've written a book about the climate. Someone called James says, what's it like to do as you're told, little boy? Interesting, based on what I said about him doing what he's told after being contacted by some shady international organisation that had an agenda for what they want to do with people. Not just me that thinks that. A Facebook account called Overseas Pakistanis says, Thank you, Sadiq Khan, for all the great work you are doing, from improving London to bringing people closer to writing books on climate change. Best London mayor ever. It's important to note that that Facebook account was called Overseas Pakistanis. Doesn't live in London, not based in London, probably not a real account. That's the only one that is supporting Sadiq Khan, but it's not. Rizat Mahmood says, best mayor ever, Sadiq Khan. Uh, click on the profile, lives in Pakistan. Many congratulations, bro, says Hanan Al Abisi. Uh, click on the profile, lives in Pakistan. Sen Usman Kabir, congratulations, how could I get my copy? Uh, lives in Nigeria. Congratulations from France. If only I could have an autograph on my book, I would pre-order it. My mum is French, my dad is Pakistani. You have a great model for all of us. London's people are really lucky. Lives in France. So all the people supporting Sadiq Khan don't actually live in London. Let's get into some of the comments from people that do live in London. All the problems in London and he writes a book. Can't wait for you to publish the one about knife crimes, says Richard. Vince says, how about writing a book called Survive? Tackling gang culture in London. Youth stabbings and shooting each other to death and you do nothing. I guess because you can't make money from that line and you can with this nonsense. Or how about bankrupt? I can't feed my family anymore as I've had to sell a perfectly good van and get in debt for a new one. It's a little bit different to Justin Trudeau's comment on the book there, Vince, but you have absolutely got a point. Dan says... Devastating 95 hours in London sees three women and a schoolgirl dead as seven others are stabbed. That's shocking, isn't it? Uh, don't forget, there is the Office of National Statistics Freedom of Information request says that one person was killed by um, polluted air in London in the last 20 years. And that can't even be traced to whether or not it's got anything to do with cars. But over the weekend, 95 hours, three women and a schoolgirl dead with seven others stabbed. Great job, Sadiq. You're doing a fantastic job on the climate. Stuart says, a waste of good trees. Uh, and Sarah agrees, saying, surely this should only be available on Kindle, those poor trees. And Anna says, how many trees were cut down for this book? And then Steve says, I hope you're scrapping your car and motorcade in favour of a bike. Funny how your gas guzzling tank is compliant. He's referring there to Sadiq Khan's five litre V8 Range Rover and his cavalcade of other Land Rovers and a Volkswagen van that he uses just to take his dog for a walk. James says, Sadiq Khan, does it list the date for when you and your security team are giving up your Range Rovers? Hopefully you'll recycle the many unsold copies of the paperback and hardback versions that are printed unnecessarily. Absolutely. Fair enough, James. A YouTuber called Jeff Buys Cars has commented on there saying, please publish a list of all your flights so far in 2023 and miles consumed by your V8 Range Rover cavalcade. That actually turned out to be one of the most popular comments on this post with 51 likes. Musa says, nice bit of emergency toilet paper. With everything going wrong in London, it's clear where our mayor has put his time into. Writes a book on climate issues, but takes a three-car convoy to walk a dog. The convoy thing, the cavalcade, the Range Rovers, the Volkswagen, the walking the dog with your cars, has really got people. Chris says, amazing how you can deliberately mislead the public and then try and exploit money from it. Guess you never actually read the science report, did you? No lives will be saved by you, Les. That's what your experts say. Co-M-E-A-P, 2009 report, paragraph 1D. <laughs> it's right there. Malcolm Jones says... Oh no, he just posted a screenshot from Highways magazine showing that Transport for London based their case for 20 mile an hour zones. They want to introduce 20 mile an hour zones and to do that they had to prove some science. The figures that they used were gathered during lockdown. So they managed to show a 24.9% fall in collisions, but that was against the backdrop of lockdown where there was 16.5% less traffic. 
Nice one, Malcolm. Paul Wake says, fictional book, does it call out the Earth as actually two degrees cooler than its highest point in the last 10,000 years? Like I said in the introduction to the video, I wouldn't mind a little bit of global warming. It's Easter, the kids are off school, and it's three degrees. They're all at home, ill. Martin says, I will buy it and use it as toilet paper. Ash says, you'll find it in Waterstones in the sci-fi section. Sylvia says, it'll be in Poundland soon. George says, well, at least if we go into lockdown again, there's a toilet paper shortage. We can use the pages of this propaganda. It's a win-win. Quite a few people were using the old uh, toilet roll joke on this one, and fair enough. Martin says, I'm sure there will be a crowd at South Bank to welcome you when you turn up to talk about this on the 24th of May. So there you go, everybody. 24th of May, South Bank, go and see Sadiq Khan. He absolutely loves speaking to members of the public, his constituents. You know, he represents you. He should take the time to talk to you and address your concerns. But look at this video. This is not a man that cares. This is a man with an agenda that has been given to him and he will be sticking to it no matter what. Bernie says, are you serious about you, Les? You would make sure that if a vehicle didn't comply, you would not be able to use it. By saying it will cost you to drive a non-compliant vehicle, all you are saying is it's okay to pollute the planet as long as you pay for it, which we know is basic government policy on the climate. Amanda says, you need to listen to people. Long term, this is going to cause economic destruction and put the cost of mental health off the scale. This untenable situation, you, Les, is making people stressed and very unwell. Never in my lifetime did I ever imagine fellow human beings treating hard-working people in this way. I thought these times had passed. Yes, we do seem to have gone backwards. Les says, it should be named how to make loads of wonga by conning the motorist coming into London and extending the charge into boroughs that are not actually part of London. Time for a mayor that truly represents a fairer approach. 34 likes on that one, so clearly people agree with Les. Jerry, we've got a conspiracy theorist here. The Club of Rome decided to manufacture consent using global warming as the bait. Published in 1993, the year after 1,790 countries signed up to Agenda 21 at the Earth Summit. Khan is a WEF puppet. In searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite, we came up with the idea that global warming and the like would fit the bill. The enemy then is humanity itself. Jerry, go outside, have a cup of tea, join the conspiracy theorists from the last video and together maybe we can get something done. Anna says, you tackle people's wallets, take your books and leave. Of love tea. Volvo tea? You can buy a Volvo tea on jeffbuyscars.com. When is the next book, How I Tackled Knife Crime, coming out again? Rachel says, I actually thought this was an April Fool that had popped up 10 days too late. I have to admit, I did as well when I first saw it. Martin says, probably written during working hours. Ash, again, says you'll find it in Waterstones in the sci-fi section. Uh, Carolyn, another conspiracy theorist, says what's getting sprayed in our skies? Now, we get into some less sensible comments here. Lewis Morgan just posted a little gif, a little moving image of Elon Musk with a flamethrower. Nice one. And then Roy has a serious one. He's turned London from a great capital city into the most dangerous place if you're a young black man or a young woman of any race to live in. Absolutely the most ignorant, abusive mayor London has ever had. Watch the question times at the London Assembly and let's hope he gets voted out at the next election. Absolutely fair point. And then some people have really not taken this seriously. Martin has posted a meme of Sadiq Khan, picture of Sadiq Khan with the caption... Follow me for more tips on how to destroy a city and its economy. What makes it worse is Paul posted the same image. Tommy, Tommy has posted a meme of a doctor looking into Sadiq Khan's ear with a torch and saying, I think we've found the problem, whilst a turd is projected from the torch on the other side. Tommy is implying with that image that there's nothing in between Sadiq Khan's ears except turd. It's a bit mean, Tommy, but entirely accurate. Martin has posted an image of Sadiq Khan driving a noddy car with £20 notes coming out the tailpipe with the caption, money, money, money. Nice one, Martin. Someone called Akka has posted a meme of a digger loading up a truck with the caption saying, it burns 1,000 litres of diesel every 12 hours to move 250 tonnes of earth to produce enough materials to produce one EV battery. <laughs> Jay Cresswell posted a gif of a bear unfurling a banner that says wanker on a scrolling platform that says you're pathetic. 
Oh, actually, Neil Brook posted that too, and Paul Bates. Finally, Jerry, our conspiracy theorist friend, says, how much did Random House get paid by the WEF to publish this? So there we go, Sadiq Khan's new book. It's going to be out soon. I don't think any of those people are going to be buying it, except some of the ones that don't live in this country. And I'd be willing to bet that even then, they don't buy it. So there we have it. Sadiq Khan, saviour of the people, has written a book. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that one. Jeff buys cars. Still YouTube's most boring car channel.